joining us right now on America's Forum, Chris Salcedo, host of the Chris Salcedo Show and author of the book, Liberty Rises. And Chris, we want to get right into it. It's Salcedo, actually, Chris Salcedo. Thank you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about what your feelings are right now about so much discussion in Washington, D.C. with the president possibly signing this executive order. Do you think maybe this time next week there could be an additional 5 million Americans in the United States? Well, you know, they, he doesn't have the power to grant them citizenship, but he will allow them to stay. And Mr. Obama admitted back in 2013, now, we, we've been told here recently that there was such a thing as stupid voters. I think it was the, um, the left-wing extremist Jonathan Gruber who, who called those who believed in Obamacare stupid voters. Well, we're not that stupid as we can't remember a, a couple of years back or a year or so ago when Mr. Obama said when he was being heckled by uh, Hispanic protest. It wasn't Hispanic protest. Actually, it was just people that were upset with him against these deportations he's been partaking in. They were saying, "Mr. Obama, you have the power." And he was saying back then, "No, I don't. I've got to go through Congress. It's it's the rule of law thing, guys." And now, one year later, fast forward, all of a sudden, magically, Mr. Obama has found this this new authority. I don't know where he found it from, but it certainly wasn't the Constitution. Now, Chris, sources say President Obama will announce a 10-point immigration plan using executive action as early as next week. Part of that plan would include suspending deportations for millions of people. Now, if this goes through, how is it going to impact our country? Well, uh, it, will, it will basically, it erodes the foundation of the rule of law. It, it is a direct slap in the face to uh, the Constitution of the United States and a direct slap in the face, frankly, to those who came to this country legally. I, you know, when, when we had this problem over the summer, guys, remember those Central American kids who the administration claimed that they were being very good about keeping Al Qaeda out of our southern border, but they couldn't stop thousands upon thousands of kids. Uh, re remember that they said the reason why the press and why we the people couldn't know where these kids were being relocated, thanks to the AP, we know they're in every state now. Uh, but the reason why we couldn't know is because they had privacy rights. Well, the people who immigrated to this country legally said privacy. When we come in the legal way, we, we get looked at uh, three ways from Sunday. They get into every aspect of our lives when we do it legally. And then you have an administration that comes out and says, well, illegals have privacy. Uh, man, it really uh -huh. ticked off a lot of people. Chris, I want to talk about the politics of this. You know, so many people are saying maybe the White House made a mistake by not signing this executive order prior to the midterm elections. Uh, obviously, the level of Hispanic vote in the state of Florida could possibly have changed the governor's race. Also in that Colorado senatorial race. How much of this is politics and maybe the Democrats trying to set themselves up for 2016? Oh, it's all, it's, it's all politics. It's all, it's all Barack Obama realizing his Democrats don't have to face the voters again on his watch. It's, he never has to face the voters again in his watch. It's unconstitutional what he's about to do, but nobody's really going to call him on it. At least, that's the indications I'm getting from the Republicans. They might use the power of the purse to, to undermine this unconstitutional effort of Barack Obama's. But it, this is, don't get me wrong, this is all politics on, the, on behalf of Mr. Obama. He wants to use this as a bludgeon to, to basically paint Hispanics uh, or paint a GOP rather is unfriendly to Hispanics. It works if you don't take into what happened this last election cycle in Texas into account, where the GOP there basically provided a template for the entire country with uh, the, the tops of the ticket there winning among Hispanic men. It was, it was a very earth, earth shattering event what happened in the great state of Texas. Yeah, it was. Now, Chris, let's talk about the U visas. Now, for people that don't know, this is essentially a visa good for four years that someone who has entered the country illegally can obtain if they are the victim of a violent crime. Now, as we can all imagine, there's been a huge level of abuse of this. Illegals in Charlotte, North Carolina are now faking crimes to stay in the city. Should the administration get rid of this policy and would it eliminate, shouldn't be a positive step in immigration reform? Well, I think it's a, I think this is a derivative of what you're calling the Wilbur Force Law, which is, People that come into this country, if they're under uh, under persecution from uh, from uh, from other areas, they're able to come into the country and plug themselves into the judicial system, which uh, and then of course coupled with Mr. Obama's uh, uh, what was it his uh, deferred action against uh, the Dreamers, the kids mm -hmm. who were brought into the country, it just acts as a magnet. So yes, that that definitely needs to be addressed by the Congress, not by Mr. Obama. Understand what Mr. Obama is doing is he's saying, look, I know what the law is. I'm just going to choose not to enforce that law. Imagine if a Republican had did something, you know, about a Republican pet project, let's say 
on tax reform. Let's just say a Republican decides, you know what, I think taxes are too high. I'm going to tell the, uh, the IRS not to enforce tax law and not to collect taxes. That would be unconstitutional, which is in essence what, what Mr. Obama is doing here on immigration. Chris, you know, there are some on the right that are saying what the president's doing is illegal and that it should be an impeachable offense when it comes to this executive order. Are you willing to go to that that far to say that they should start proceedings and possibly look into impeachment as a result of what the president may be doing in the next couple of weeks? Uh, let me let me put my political hat on. Uh, let me say that Mr. Obama has earned impeachment, not just with this action he's threatening to do, but his past actions as well his unconstitutional recess appointments. I mean, uh, just on down the line. Uh, I believe Obama has earned impeachment, but I do not counsel as a political maneuver the GOP to pursue impeachment because look at what Barack Obama did to the Democrats in this last election cycle. It was a tsunami. I want the name Democrat and Obama to be used synonymously, not just in the next two years, but for decades to come. See, the Democrats are cheering Mr. Obama on to do this lawless action because they want the Republicans to get so angry that they'll impeach him and take care of the Democrats' problem for them, which is Barack Obama a drag on their ticket. I don't think the Republicans ought to oblige. I think that when you think Democrat from here on out, you ought to think Obama and all the negatives that come with it. All right, Chris, we wrapped up the midterm elections, obviously, last week, and the American people sent a clear message to the Democratic Party. You say a movement occurred in the Hispanic community that was really overshadowed by the GOP Senate takeover. We saw some positive numbers for the Republicans as far as what happened in those midterms. What was the mini winning message from the GOP that, that swayed the Latino community? Well, let, let, me, let me put it in proper context. Nationwide, still Hispanics went to Democrats two to one except in the state where the most Hispanics reside, which is in Texas. Let me tell you what happened in Texas. I got my little cheat sheet here. And Chris, let me just uh, jump in. You got about 10 seconds, so just real quick. Oh, well, the Republicans uh, actually did really well, gathering, gathering about 46% of the Latino vote. And among the Hispanic men, they actually won Hispanic men in the great state of Texas. All right, some positive numbers for the Republicans in Texas and many other states. Keep it right here on America's Forum. Chris, thanks so much for that update.